Welcome back. So now it's time to turn one of IKEA's cheapest like cabinets, nightstands, whatever, from a cheap nightstand into an electrical cabinet for a CC machine. And since this cabinet is already made from sheet metal, we're halfway there. Uh, one thing it's missing that proper electrical cabinets have, like this one, is a double back. So you have an extra piece of sheet metal that you can fit all your components on that's removable. So that means you can assemble everything on a bench outside of the cabinet. You have proper access to all the wire terminals, all the components, everything. And then you simply lift up the entire thing and install it inside the cabinet. I want that. So I've gotten a piece of 2mm aluminium sheet that I'm going to cut out and make a proper double back for. And I will assemble everything on the bench outside. But before I start doing that, Let's head over to the bench for a quick discussion about safety. Here we have a rough layout of the electrical system of the CNC router. And just as a quick rundown of the components, here we have four stepper motor drivers, X, Y1, Y2 and C axis. Uh, I have a main power breaker for the electrical cabinet. We have two mini circuit breakers. One will go to both the power supplies Oh yeah, of course, these are the power supplies. They are 36 volt, 350 watt power supplies for the stepper motor drivers. And the 10 amp fuse will go for the power supplies. And the 6 amp circuit breakers for the spindle, which is my Makita router that I showed you earlier. This is a contactor and that's like a high power relay. I also have the solid state relay for the spindle on off. I have this relay expansion board, which uh, I'm going to leave room for it, but I might not install it right now because I don't think I have use for it straight away. And here is a breakout board for an Arduino Nano, which will act as my controller. Or, or to be more precise, the PC will act as a controller, and this will act as a smooth stepper slash breakout board. And this is just a bunch of uh, terminal blocks with integrated disconnects, which is really awesome for testing and troubleshooting purposes. Uh, so this is everything that will sit inside the electrical cabinet. Apart from this, I will use this momentary on-off switch to control this power contactor, which I will get to shortly. And, and of course this, which will be my start cycle, stop cycle and my emergency stop switch. And this will sit on top of the table next to the machine. In the future, I would also like to have two potentiometers here. One for the spindle speed, the RPM, and one for the feed override. Uh, but that's a future project. Uh, so let's clean this off and let me talk a bit about safety. Now, I have, I have left these components on here because I'm going to hook up a small testing circuit just to show you what I'm talking about. I will also need this one. And that's just regular power outlet, duh. Uh, so, what am I talking about when I'm talking about safety? I'm talking about machine safety. Which means that if I hit the emergency stop, all the motions on the machine are turned off. Any spinning part, any moving part is stopped dead in its track, or if you're using something called integrated safety, it's moved to a safe position. And how safety systems like this are laid out is actually specified kind of strictly in machine building standards. Here in Europe we use something called machinery directive. And they are very specific about what should count as a safety system and what shouldn't. Now, as a bit of a background to this discussion, many hobby grade CNC breakout boards have a terminal they label as an e-stop terminal. And if you look into the wiring diagrams, uh, I'm going to see if I can pull something up on the screen here to show you. And the idea is that you hook your emergency stop up to the e-stop terminal of your controller and when you hit the e-stop, the controller stops all the motions of the machine or moves it to a safe position or a safe state. Uh, this is something called integrated safety. And what that means is that the safety circuits are integrated in the controller. And then you don't need any external circuitry to handle the safety, such as a safety relay. And it's definitely possible to design a controller like this and I can't promise you that these shiny controllers and copies of controllers that we're dealing with aren't designed like this, but I'm willing to bet quite a bit of money that most of these cheap breakout boards that are probably copies of 10-year-old designs or 15-year-old designs based for parallel port control aren't designed as proper integrated safety devices. So that means that if your machine malfunctions, if you have to hit the ESOP switch, which you should only do if it malfunctions and 
something dangerous is happening. At all other times you should use the stop cycle button. That means you basically like to live dangerously. And I don't mind a bit of danger, but not when it comes to machine safety. Now for something to count as an integrated safety device, and I'm not sure about the exact particulars that goes through actually classifying a machine component as an integrated safety device, but some of the steps I know has to be fulfilled is that you have redundant circuitry. So basically, in a safety PLC designed to handle e-stops and other safety functions, you basically have an entire redundant CPU, which means if the first CPU crashes, the second one takes over and finishes the task or puts the machine in a safe state. And the same is with the, the input outputs, the Ethernet communication. Safe Ethernet communication means you have two separate communication hubs that can talk independently of each other. So if one fails, the other takes over. And this is also true in safety relays. Unfortunately, I don't have a safety relay to show you here. But that's basically a contact or relay. It might look a bit like this, might look different, usually with some flashing lights and stuff that indicate if it's safe or not. And you have two or more safety outputs that feed into two or more safety inputs. These are usually hooked up in parallel going in each direction. Meaning that if I have an emergency stop switch with two contact blocks like here, I have, will have one switch going this way and the other switch will go this way. And they should always be in a normally closed configuration, meaning that if a cable is cut for some reason, you have an e-stop. Now, and the same is true about these safety relays as for safety PLCs. They have redundant circuit inside them that actually ensures that if part of the circuit fails, the other takes over and puts the machine in a safe state. That's all this is about. And like I said, I don't trust the cheap shiny CNC controllers to be designed this way. And I definitely don't trust uh, an Arduino, which is what I'm gonna use to be designed this way or function this way. So that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have the Arduino as a controller and then I'm gonna have a separate safety circuitry. Now I don't have a safety relay because they are kind of expensive and not really needed for something small like this. You can use a regular contactor hooked up the correct way. And that I'm gonna show you right now. So what do we want here? We want basically that if we hit the emergency stop button, it should take two conscious actions to reset the emergency stop switch. One of the conscious actions is to reset the emergency stop switch and the other one will be to actually turn on the circuit. And this will pull the contactor, which will then hold itself. But for demonstration purposes, I will use these two buttons instead. These will later be hooked up to the controller for start and stop functions. So let me just draw a quick diagram for you before we start. So let's draw a basic schematic diagram of how this will work. So here we have L. And that is line. That's the incoming 230 volt line. And down here we have the neutral. And in a real diagram we would also have the PE, the protective earth down here, but I won't draw in that. So what do we have? We have two buttons. Or more precisely we have three buttons. We have an e-stop, we have on, we have off. Okay, let's draw these. Let's start with the, the start button. So that's connected to the line. And that is a normally open button. Or a normally open breaker, I should say. Then we have the, the stop cycle. And that is normally close button, meaning that it actually opens the circuit when we push it. Let's name this S1 and S2. These are just the standard designations for buttons in electrical systems. And we of course also have the e-stop. And this is also normally closed switch. And down here we have a contactor coil. And that's the coil in this contactor that we hook up to the A1 and A2 terminals. And that's for pulling the contactor and closing the circuit. We can name this one K1. So this is our first step in the layout. So what will happen here is that when we push the start cycle button, this switch, the start switch, or will close. And the contactor coil pulls, and this one closes. But as soon as we release this button, the contactor will open again. And that's not what we want. We want it to hold itself. So that means we add 
a redundant contact up here. And as you can see, this one has four contacts in line. And if you run three phase, you only need three ones. So you have an extra one that's labeled as normally open. And we will use this one. So we will add another normally open switch. And this one is of course pulled by the relay. That's K1. And if we attach this one in parallel to the S1 start button, like this. So what will happen now when we push the start button? First off, start button will close. We will energize the coil. When the coil is energized, that one is closed, which means that if we release the button, S1 opens again, but K1 is still closed. So now the relay is holding itself. So how do we get the relay coil to release? Well, we have two ways to do this. One, push the stop button, S2 opens, and K1 releases. Or push the emergency stop button. And in that case, of course, S S3 opens, K1 releases and the contactor is reset. And this is what I'm going to hook up here to show you. Now, just a quick note here before you go out there and kill yourself. We are working with, I won't say high voltage because it's not above a thousand volts DC or... No, sorry, a thousand volts AC and 1500 volts DC. Uh, but we are working with current that could kill you if you don't know what you're doing. So, just so you're aware, this video is only for entertainment purposes. And I am a trained industrial automation and control technician, so I work with stuff like this daily. So just take care out there and don't hurt yourself in building anything like this in your own home. Now to save some time, I won't have the outlet hooked up, I think. I will only show you how the relay works. And just trust me that all the contacts are pulled. You'll be able to see it. And now the control circuit is complete. And I'm gonna run a quick check of all my connections to make sure it's okay. And now as a quick note, AC circuits are a bit tricky because as you can see, we have a connection over the coil of the relay, which means you can get some weird values if you're not careful and think about what you're doing. But yeah, we should be good. So let's, uh, let's turn it on and see what happens. Hopefully nothing blows up. And if I push the start button, the contactor should pull. And if I push the stop button, it should release. And the same thing, if I push the start button, it pulls. And if I push the e-stop, it releases. And now the important thing is that to reset this circuit, and actually get the contactor to pull again, I have to both reset the e-stop and push the start button. And that is how a safety circuit should work. Ta-da! I'm sorry to say I skipped filming a couple of steps because basically just more of the same. It's just routing cables, connecting cables and rinse and repeat. So as you can see, the electrical panel is installed inside the cabinet and I also have my start-stop circuit and my emergency stop hooked up. And this is of course the same circuit as I explained previously on the bench. So when I turn it on, this main contactor will pull, it will energize the drives, it will energize, or sorry, it will energize the power supplies, it will energize the drives and so on. And the same thing when I turn it off, it will release it. And the emergency stop is hooked up on the same circuit as the, the off switch, this breaker. So that works in the same fashion. So to restart it, I have to reset the emergency stop and then turn it on again. And the beautiful thing of this is that even if my main breaker, which this one will be hooked up to, blows, the main contactor will release as well. And I'll have to turn it on again, so it won't restart automatically. Now, one thing I didn't do, which I would have done if this was an industrial machine, is actually hook up the control voltage the voltage that goes through the breakers here and the emergency stop on a separate fuse or mini circuit breaker. Now they are hooked up on the same fuse as the spindle. And the reason for that is one, I didn't have another mini circuit breaker laying around at like 3 amps or maximum 6 amps because 
there is no power draw in this circuit almost at all. And secondly, this is all analog circuitry, so it's not sensitive for, for interference at all. So this would work just fine, it's just not completely up to standard as it would be if I were going to sell it, or if this was an industrial application, which is not, it's my, my garage. And one thing that's also worth noting here, is that if you look closely at this main breaker, I don't know how well you can see this, and I don't want to move the camera right now, uh, is that I have both the neutral, the blue wire, and the line, the live, the black wire, hooked up to the main breaker. And if this was an industrial installation where this one was hooked up directly to an electrical panel, and not through a plug and socket, then the neutral wouldn't be hooked through the main breaker. Because in an electrical panel, you know that the neutral is always the neutral, it's never the live wire. But since I'm going to hook this up with a plug into an outlet, and I can turn the plug over, I will have no idea which side is the live and which side is the neutral. And that doesn't matter at all for the power supplies. But if I only had the live wire going through the main breaker, and the neutral running outside, I run the risk, if the plug is turned the wrong direction, to still have a live wire in this cabinet when this breaker is turned off. And that's a big no-no. Because then I will still have the ground wires, and they will always hook it up correctly. And, as you should know, in an AC system, you will always have a current between the live wire and the ground. Because generally, the ground and neutral are connected in the electrical box out in the street. So that's one important thing to remember if you build your machine connected to an outlet. Make sure you break both the neutral and the live wire. But that's about it for this week, unfortunately. I was hoping to have all the cables for the motors and limit switches routed as well, as well but they are delayed in shipping. Uh, this time it's not because of the Swedish post office though. This time it's the supplier. They were out of the cable I needed. But they have promised me they will ship it next week instead, so I'm hoping this video will be out a week from now. It should be. And if it's not, I'll make sure to tell you. Maybe through my Instagram. There's a link in the description if you want to check it out. And also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on this or future projects. Because I promise you, I have a lot of stuff lined up. Both CNC stuff and other stuff as well, so I hope I won't disappoint you. And if you like what I'm doing, please let me know somehow. Leave a comment, send me an email. You'll find my email address down in the description. And uh, that's about it. And until the next video this build is out, check these out.